it was a tale of two halves. Uh, I, was, I was as elated as I am right now, as how disappointed I was in the first half. Uh, we, we didn't show up. You know, we talk about the triangle toughness. That's our brand, 2-1-0. And we were not physical on defense the first half. Uh, we never been a punt. Uh, we were going to run the ball sincere 30 times in the game. I don't think he had it. I don't know how many times he hit the first half, but we didn't run the ball well. And we did a couple kicks. It worked. A hoot. And that's what the triangle toughness is about. And that, there was nothing that changed. Uh, it's the first time I've ever had to get after my kids. Now, they don't have to get after them about two tutorials. I had to get after them about, you know, being late, not cleaning the locker room up, not working out hard at times. I had to get – I've never had to get after my kids in a game. Not one time since I've coached here. It's the first time I had to go get them. I had to get after them, and I challenged them. I mean, I went after them. I mean, I, I tell – I talk about branding all the time. Uh, if you drive through Starbucks or Chick-fil-A, I mean, the product's good. It's not just the marketing and the branding. It, it, the product is good. And we can talk about the triangle toughness, but – Nobody saw it tonight, and that's all that was. There was no different play calls. Coach Nix called the same game plan. We called the same plays on offense, and Coach Perry called the same stuff on, on, on special teams. That was just a mindset. And uh, I'm just as elated in the second half as I was disappointed in the first half. So I want to make sure y'all hear that, because I don't want y'all to think I'm being Debbie Downer because we're really fired up right now uh, to beat a football team that's beaten us six times in a row. And that, that's hard. That's hard to get over that hump. Uh, but I'm sure you were just like me. Kind of like the UAB game, the longer that thing went along, the more y'all were like, oh, holy mackerel, we might be better than these guys. And we finally got all that on. Jeff, what does it mean to be able to break this three-game losing streak the way you guys did in this fourth quarter, scoring 14 on extra points? To be in that locker room and the way we did it. I mean, we went through the pick six and, you know, we missed the tackles uh, and they scored. That was a backbreaker, man. And I told the kids, I said, I'm telling you, our defense is going to choke them out. I said, we can just score one time, just one time, and just give our defense some juice, just some juice. Sincere McCormick will run the ball and win the ball game. And I mean, it went just like that. Now I'm very disappointed we did not end the game on four minute offense. That was, that was disheartening. Uh, but our defense went out there and went played by AP. And uh, yeah, it's huge. That locker room was, that locker room was fun. And uh, that's, that's why you do what you do, JJ, because it feels kids have that success in there. It's hard when you lose. And we can talk about how great they played against three really good football teams, but we all need we all need an out of what occasionally. And those kids got a big out of the today. Coach, your defense held the Louisiana Tech to 35 yards in the second half. What changed from half to half? Uh, effort, D line, just relentless effort. Uh, and you know, I had never had to go after those guys before. Uh, broke my bracelet, man. I had a nice little bracelet, but man, Jarvis on, Jamie on, Carwell gave it to me. It shattered in there, and I, I just don't ever get after them that much. I don't have to. I mean, I don't have to. Literally, we, we have a culture we live by, and our kids do it all the time. Uh, but uh, I got after them, and they, and they responded. That's it. I'm, I'm not, there's nothing different. Nothing. Can you talk us a little about what does that look like when you say you have to get after them? Is that just at halftime something you say, or how do you get that done? Tone, personality, delivery. Excitement, passion, it's challenging a man to be a man. And because I've invested so much in them, Greg, I put so much into them, I made a withdrawal today. And, uh, but we've deposited a lot. And my and kids, we talk about that all the time. About let's, just, let's put deposits into people. I don't like being around people, take a lot of withdrawals. I don't like being around them. I don't like negative people. But, but we had to get after them a little bit. And I wouldn't say I was negative, but I challenged them. We're better than that. We're better than that. I just didn't like it. I didn't, I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like the way it felt. And uh, I've done this long enough, I can just tell when it wasn't right. Did it say something about the character of the kids, how they responded to that? Amen, Greg. I, mean, I couldn't agree more. I, as I told my coaches, I said, man, I went after them today. We're going to find out about us today. When you take them into withdrawal out of, of kids, they can say, man, forget you. You don't want to call them plays. You don't, you don't want to get this play out, man. We're out. And uh, they didn't do that one bit. They didn't blame. They didn't blame. It's who they are. It's who they've been all year. Y'all might not can tell, but that's who they've been the entire season. They just won't go away, man. They just won't go away. Anything else for Coach? How about Sincere McCormick? What did you make of his game overall? Obviously, the record breaking one with a couple of. Yeah, first time I ever had to get for him. I didn't think he was as good the first half. I didn't think he made anybody miss. Uh, and he, he, he told me to. He came out at halftime and said, I, I got you, Coach. The last time he told me that uh, was the Middle Tennessee game in the fourth quarter. And uh, 
That's two times he told me he two for two. And uh, of course, they all said the same thing right now. Coach, you got to do that more often. I'm like, man, come on, man. Really? You want me just to do that all, all the time? That's going to really work. The reason it worked was I don't ever do it, you know, heads. That's why it worked. <laughs> if you did it all the time, it wouldn't work. That's called nagging. We'll make no comments about that. Uh, Coach, uh, Taikiogo Ta Kellogg had a breakout game today. What what led to that performance? He just, he's been so close to being what I wanted to be off the field. And he's finally getting there. He's finally getting there. He's buying into the culture. And he's always had talent. Uh, his nickname is Potential. That's what I call him all the time. Because they know my definition is potential. is everything we're not. Everybody's told me since I've been here, man, UTSA, it has the potential to be a gold mine. In this in college football, yeah, what is potential? We're not that yet. It's time to go be there. I mean, we are in the seven largest city in the country. We play in the Alamo Dome. We're in the hotbed of recruiting in the country. We've got a great administration. We got great university. We got great boosters. Let's go get it done. The potential is what we're not, and we're getting close. We're getting closer uh, to being what everybody thinks we should be. Great. Did you know how many carries Sincere had in the second half? Did you have any hesitation giving it to him that many times? No, we were, we, were, we, were, we, were, we were intentional the last three weeks. As much as y'all were beating me up, man, I didn't want to tell y'all because, you know, you don't want to say what you're doing, but we were saving some, there's only so many punches in those boxers. And we were, we were very intentional because uh, we knew we were going to ride him tonight. And he, he showed up now. You got to be smart. You just, you know, the days of doing that are almost over. And that kid loves his teammates, he loves his town, he loves his university, and he's really good. He's really good. Did you expect that he'd still have that much left in the tank as we were getting up past 35 carries? He's just working so hard right now in practice, Craig. Early in the year, he couldn't have done that. Uh, you know, we did way too much to him the Texas State game, way on a hot day. Uh, his his Titan, that day, his energy, he expanded. I don't want to ever do that to that kid again because of the heat. Uh, but I guarantee you, we can't read the Titan in here because of the, it's inside, which is amazing to me. It's way above my uh, lack of brain power. But when we're outside, we can know exactly how much energy he's expanded. I guarantee you today, he expanded a lot of energy. Um, Coach, uh, in the fourth quarter there, you guys really got the Alamo Dome going. I don't know how many people were in there, but it was pretty loud. Um, and, and the energy seemed to feed. You know, the team and the crowd kind of balanced there. And, um, you know, you guys are about to go on the road for two weeks here. How do you capture what you had in the Alamo Dome tonight and take that to, uh, to keep moving forward? I couldn't agree with you more. Our band was fantastic. The crowd was fantastic. Our sideline was fantastic. What I, I made a big deal last week. If you remember when the score went 21 to 10, uh, I had us fail on our sideline. And we were we, we had no passion. Our pillow killings were pillow zilla. They were nothing. And I, I fronted them out big time on it. And I said, I don't care what the score is or not. When I look at that sideline, the pillow killers better be alive and well. So we're, we're kind of used to bringing our own juice. But your point is very valid. We're just going to have to do that. Uh, you can't travel all those kids with you on the road. So that, that hurts, right? So uh, it's a great point. Uh, we can feel it. There's no doubt. And imagine what it's going to be like when we get this place rocking. We play an exciting style of football. I know we don't execute as clean as I want to yet, but we, we do some fun stuff. And I think the community is going to really want to come watch these kids play. And this is going to be an exciting, exciting venue to play at. Uh, I can't wait. Uh, it is what it is right now, 2020. But uh, I, I am looking forward to that day. Jeff, does this feel like a particularly pivotal moment in the season? Just the difference between being two and one in conference versus if you didn't win and you were on a four four loss streak there. You know, the coach talking is going to tell you no. That's what I'm supposed to say. But the common sense and just the fan in me has to think it means something, right? I just now FAU is really good. Uh, you know, I don't know how that Marshall score turned out, but you know, it was a really good game. I know, and uh, you know, playing down there, I, I would think. Just our confidence has to be picking up, but it's a great it, well, it, What is chapter seven? Yeah. I'll tell you it's chapter eight. Really. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff.